Hi, everybody. Max Lakato here from my home to yours. Thanks so much for joining me for today's encouraging word. This podcast episode features a special conversation between Tony Evans, Crystal Evans Hurst, Priscilla Shirer, Jonathan Evans, and Anthony Evans that took place on Max's recent virtual special. If you're experiencing some tough times right now, this conversation is for you. You can watch the virtual special in its entirety at faithgateway.com slash moment. Thanks, Max. And we are so excited to be with you (laughs) and all of your friends as a family. This is the Evans clan. I'm here (laughs) with my four children. There's Crystal and Priscilla, Anthony Jr. and Jonathan. And the favorite. (laughs) (laughs) And so we're excited that you are discovering this truly is your moment. And you know, some of those moments uh, that God is taking us to come out of sometimes some very painful scenarios. We got together as a family and uh, we did a book together, our first collective project called Divine Disruption. How to find hope when life is breaking your heart. Because we've gone through a season of uh, heartbreaking. Uh, in six month intervals, we lost eight family members, uh, concluding with the loss of uh, my father and my wife one month apart. Sure. Then, on top of that, uh, Priscilla had cancer in her lungs. And so that was a major surgery. And it's just been one thing after another. And we all know what it's like when life hits you hard. But instead of running from God, when life slaps you around and, and you can't even locate God, that's the time to run to him because that's where hope is located. Mm-hmm. And so don't let the moments pass you by because you're involved in the pain of circumstances. Mm-hmm. Rather, let that catapult you to see what God has next in the circumstances that he's allowed you to go through. I'm going to let each of the kids just say a word about the hope that they found in our divine disruption of all the losses that we have we have faced. Yeah, there's a lot of hope there, but we don't want to discount the fact that there's a lot of hurt there. Um, that it's a it's a hard struggle that we went through, a lot of tears and a lot of pain and a lot of um, you know, for me, I know personally, you know, being disappointed in God that He didn't come through with all of the prayer and all of the people praying we had around the world where two or three are gathered. And if you pray according to my will and all of the things that we know we did um, because we were looking for God to come through. And while at one point I said, well, maybe he didn't come through. I realized through spending time with him that he came through for us in a way that's greater than if he would have answered our prayer the way that we asked Yeah, Yeah. uh, because God has given us victory. Mm -hmm. What I discovered through this is that the Holy Spirit is real. Because the only way that I felt like we collectively, yes, through the struggles, we did cry and we had questions and we were like, what what in the world is happening? What I did see was us being buoyed up by something that kept us getting out of bed in the morning, kept us putting clothes on. We kept raising our kids. We kept showing up for each other, showing up for our dad. And how do you have that kind of hope? and strength when there are so many continuous devastating things, Mm -hmm. I can only attribute that to the Holy Spirit. So I've always believed that the Holy Spirit's presence in my life matters, that the presence of God actually makes a difference. I've always believed that. But now I know beyond any reasonable doubt Mm -hmm. that apart from the strengthening power of the Holy Spirit, there would be no way that people can live through what we've been through, um, live through the pandemics that globally we've all been through medically and Um, socially, racially, politically, the only way you can keep on showing up in your life is if there is a power greater than you that's at work within you. Yeah. Um, When it comes to dealing with the disruptions in my life and being ready for them, I didn't um, put as as much importance as I should have on retrofitting your life for disruptions. Like if you want to be ready for your moment, um, as Pastor Max is talking a lot about on this broadcast, it's also retrofitting your life to be ready for that moment. I, I spent a lot of time in Los Angeles and and the house that I got 
was retrofitted for earthquakes. It was almost built on some uh, foundation that moves a little bit. Now, when there's no earthquake, you don't have to, you don't see that. Yeah. But there have been moments where there has been shaking and what could have been devastating, you know, you got to put some pictures back up on the wall, but you're not dealing with a whole, th- yes, a yeah. whole structure that has fallen because you were ready for that moment ahead of time. And, and our life was shaken to its core. Um, but because of the retrofitting that our parents did for us and that we've tried to do, not perfectly, but um, God, and with God's grace, in addition to that, he has set us up to um, be able to deal with the shaking in a way that has not completely yeah. um, dev- devastated us. Yes, and we're able to be here be here with you. Yeah. I was also going to say, um, I'm just, I'm, I'm extra talkative because it's Pastor Max. I like, know. it's Max. We, we, we love being with you. <laughs> Um, I well, work read out. All his books. Yeah, yes, the world reads all his books. Um, we there. I work out at a gym in Los Angeles with a lot of people in there who do entertainment and stuff. And there's one guy who was working out hard and who just looked ripped up. And I was like, "What? What's going on?" And he said to me, "I don't actually know what's going on." He's actually a big actor. If I said his name, you know him. He said, "I really don't really know what's going on next. I'm just preparing for the role that I want, so that when <laughs> I walk in the room and." audition they will be ready to give me the role and I won't need three months to get ready for what I'm asking for Mm. that's what being ready for your moment is about and that's what we've experienced God's grace but also oh I didn't know I was preparing in inadvertent ways for what was coming the good 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 bad and and ugly I think um holding on to hope for me has just looked like putting one foot in front of the other honestly Mm. yeah Yeah. and I think um, sometimes we want to over spiritualize those things and figure out what the right verse is and what the right church is to go to and what's the right message. And sometimes it's just waking up and saying, "God, I offer you my heart again today." Mm-hmm. Wow, that's that's classic. And and you know, um, I've had to learn that preaching it is one thing; living through it is a whole different ball game. <laughs> but I had to continually go back to what I knew to be true about God. You know, I had to appeal to his character, to his attributes, and believe that he could take messes and still create miracles. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to encourage everybody to not miss your moment because of your misery. Mm -hmm. To not let your pain divert you from your purpose. That God can take our struggles and redeem them. He can even take our failures Mm -hmm. and redeem them so that they become useful to advance his name, his glory, and his kingdom and beneficial to us at the same time. Look for that divine moment and may what you are experiencing through this gathering inspire you to stick close to God no matter what you're going through because he knows where he's taking you even if you're not yet sure where you're going. Stick with him. This indeed is your moment. Hey, this is Dina Lynn Lakato. Max and I are so thankful you joined us for today's encouraging word. Please subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss a single message. For more information about Max's ministry, please visit maxlocato.com. Until next time, stay encouraged.